time it is. And thank you for that wonderful introduction. You're certainly welcome, Daphne. And I think for today, it's going to be turkey time. And so we think about Thanksgiving. Uh, we have a wonderful guest who is backstage with us today. His name is Roland Friedel, and he's also a co-host on the Mallorca Connection. So we're going to be bringing him out. But before we do, as a, a Londoner, what do you think of when, when you hear Thanksgiving? What does it mean to you? Well, as soon as I hear the word Thanksgiving, what comes to mind personally uh, all my American friends I've had in the past and still who I have. Uh, and I remember, you know, turkey dinners, pumpkin pie. I hear them talking about driving a long way to see their families and it's a holiday. Okay, that's what comes to mind. But all that is in my head, not because... Um, I absorbed the information in the UK. I actually lived, and um, people might know, I lived in Germany for about 18 years. Uh, and my children went to an international school where there was about 60% of the people there were from America. So we were lucky enough to see all the excitement of Thanksgiving. Um, but I know there's lots of um, historic meanings as well. So I'm really looking forward to uh, question our guests to see what he has in store for us. Fantastic. Well, thank you for sharing that. I learned something new about you today. As always, I, you are very, very deep. You have a, a huge soul and heart, and I'm just so happy to have you in this space with me today. Thank you. Yeah, it's so exciting. When I think about Thanksgiving, I always think about that feeling of fullness, a fullness of all that we have to be grateful for, not just about the meal, but there's so much, especially here in the United States, so much to be grateful for every single day that to me, I don't feel that we necessarily have to designate a day to recognize how thankful we are, but we have it. And so I guess it's, it's important to bring it to light that there is so much all around us, simple things, things that we didn't expect to come into our lives to be grateful for. So Thanksgiving is here for me every day. And uh, that being said, I'd love to bring on our guest. He is an amazing person himself. I had the pleasure of meeting him through John Christian, who is also a co-host on Life's Amazing Journey. Roland is over in Mallorca. He's also an international person himself. He is a mastery level business coach, having dealt with some of the largest companies in the world. And he also is extremely well connected. And he is our expert today on Thanksgiving. Let's welcome him. Hi, Roland. Hello. Hello, Jacqueline. Hello, Daphne. Great to see you. Lovely to nice see you. See you. Welcome. welcome. What welcome, do you welcome. think about turkeys here with the hat on? <laughs> yeah, good, good to meet you. Please. <laughs> Uh, we have a comment already, which I love, from our friend Meredith Allen. You both look fabulous. Great topic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Meredith. All right, Roland, before we begin, I'd love for you to share just a little bit of background about yourself and, and the work that you do. Yeah, thank you. First of all, thank you for inviting me. Uh, thank you for having me back on your show. I really appreciate it. Uh, all the effort you're doing to, to spread amazing knowledge and expertise uh, from different persons to the world. I really, I really appreciate it very much because this is what people need now in these uncertain times to get wisdom, knowledge from people of expertise and, and, and finding their own ways, whatever it is and whatever topic it is. So about myself, um, yeah, I'm happy to introduce myself. I'm, I'm Roland, originally from Austria, living on this beautiful island in Spain. And I dedicate my life the last 25 years to support organizations and leaders in their performance and um, not only in their performance about higher, wider, faster, longer, but also uh, in, in, in their work-life balance, helping them to get better results by better health and have a better health uh, balance. Because I, I strongly believe that we are in this world for a purpose. And this means purpose to have a fulfilled life. So I support these leaders in the organization, not only, as I mentioned, to, to perform better, but also to go home back, you know, from the beloved, to come back to the beloved ones uh, where we are during our job and be fulfilled and full of energy and not tired, exhausted, close to a burnout or depression or to an addiction. 
that most managers unfortunately have. So my job, my, my mission is to support them to get fulfilled during the job. So when they're back home in the evenings on the weekend, they're full of energy, full of joy, and to spend this joyful and good time, like Thanksgiving we have today, uh, together with their friends, family, and beloved ones. Thank you, Roland. That was beautiful. Uh, before we begin with our questioning, I just would like to know, as I asked Daphne, uh, Roland, you did a lot of research on Thanksgiving, but what were your thoughts about Thanksgiving before you did the research? What did it mean to you? Okay, okay. You know, unfortunately, we don't have this, uh, this, this, this day, the celebration day in my home country, Austria, but luckily I have and I had uh, American friends. So in, in, in close to my hometown, I had a, a very nice couple. Actually, she was from Austria, but he, he, she was from the US, he was from Austria. And they had this, uh, this uh, Thanksgiving parties with Turkey and all the other thing. And I, I really loved it every single year to be on the guest list, to be invited, not only for the excellent food, but you know, for these conversations, to get in touch with people, to communicate, to reflect, to learn. And, and especially today, in this uncertain world, I guess it's so important that people come together, celebrate, and and enjoy not only good food but also a good accompaniment, a good conversation. And that's my my memories about Thanksgiving. I really, I always loved it to be invited. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. So uh, my first question would be, in doing some preliminary research, I see that there was a group of people who actually left England to come to the United States and and create a new colony here. What information did you learn about that, Roland? Yeah, actually, it was in the beginning of the uh, seventh, 17th century, I guess, 1620, 1623, the, the, the North Norwegian when uh, people left Europe and came, and came to the new world with their new hopes <laughs> uh, to explore the new continent. And uh, it is said that they brought this festival. But uh, to be honest, uh, this festival is much, much older. It has um, not only does the, we can talk about later, the indigenous in the US um, had already this festival, but also in former times, like the Romans, the Greeks, but also the Egyptian had this kind of festival where they celebrate, came together, have a really feast, you know, a lot of food, drinking, party, just to celebrate the gods and be thankful for the harvest they had in autumn. But as I said, the, the traditional day we know in the US, uh, it had its origin in the beginning of the 17th century. Yes, that's true. Good to know. Thank you. Daphne, um, I'm wondering when you're hearing Roland talk about this, was this new information for you? Well, no, because the thing is, um, having had three children, um, and they're all grown up now, thank heavens. Um, but at the time, you know, they would come back from school with their history homework. Um, so there was always kind of dates and, you know, people going from England to America and setting up this whole new life. But the thing is, what does intrigue me is actually the hat. Um, because it's just like, I think when we look at the symbol of what that hat means and who wears it, uh, then I think it's going to give us more information, like we're detectives, right? So, Roland, have you got any idea what that hat is about that they wear? What is the symbolic? Is it the pilgrim hat or the... Yeah, yeah. Is that pretty, actually, uh, the, the official history said that in, in, in 1620, there came a, a, a large ship came from the US, from actually from Plymouth, of England uh, to the US. It was in September 1620. Had a lot of people on I'm, I'm, I'm Bilsham on it, and it was actually a mixture of Bilsham and Puritans, but both of them. Oh, and pilgrims and Puritans! And Puritans. Wow, and, I can't and, imagine uh, what what the atmosphere was like on the ship. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's really interesting. And actually, they arrived, and it was a very, very brutal, very, very cold, icy, brutal winter. And 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 so when they so when 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 they left so when they arrived in, in, in New England it was spring, yeah, and so they really happy been uh, they really have really have been happy to to escape the cold uh, winter where they came in. So uh, in 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 
So when they, when they arrived, so in, in the following uh, autumn, um, October, November in 1621, they had their first harvest. So the, the, the growing crops, so they had their first harvest. harvest and my, I guess it was successful. That's why they, why they started, I call it a part to celebrate it, what, what we know today as, as Thanksgiving. And so they are partying, having a feast. But and years later, it became officially. I guess it was, I don't know which president it was, but during the American Revolution, years later, the Continental Congress designated one or even more days for Thanksgiving uh, to, to start it. And in the end of the 18th century, in 1789, George Washington uh, issued the first Thanksgiving proclamation by the national government of the United States. So it became officially uh, this holiday, which is, I guess, and it's very, very important for the Americans. And, and as I said before, I really appreciate this Thanksgiving, the families coming together. And I know from my US friends, really, they travel the whole country, yeah, a long, long distances, at least to, to, to see each other for Thanksgiving. And I, what I know from American friends, for some, it's much more important than a birthday party or something, really. On Thanksgiving, fam family tradition, family, friends come together. And that's, that's really amazing. I think yes. it has a very powerful message for the times that we live in now because there's just nothing like having a meal with the people you love or spending time with your friends. So um, Dr. Jacqueline and I talked about this program and why we wanted to do it and why we think it's so important. It's actually to um, awaken the stories and to hand them down and to get and to encourage people to talk to their younglings about the history of things and why things are so important, right? So Dr. Jacqueline, I have a question for you. When you were 12 years old and it was Thanksgiving, what happened in your house? In our house, we always had to get ready for the dinner. My mom would be cooking starting days in advance and my sister and I would be helping and it was all about the feast. And there was so much work that went into preparing the meal. And then we would sit at a formal dinner. Everybody had a certain place to sit and we would say our prayers of thank you for this meal and thank you for everything that we had. And then we would dig in. And before you know it, all that work, days and days of work, literally in half an hour, it's over. <laughs> and then everybody would sit there and chat and my father, love to dine he would say we never want to rush through a meal and get up because it's all about the experience of being together so we would spend hours at the table just chatting and as a young kid i would look at all the adults and just be interested in all their stories and my parents would want us to remember and would reiterate over and over again how we need to be grateful for everything that we have that there are people starving across the world and we have so much when some have so little so that's what it was like and we have a, a comment, and this is from Natalie. Hi, Natalie. Hello, Dr. Jacqueline and Daphne. Lovely to see you. Nice wow. to see you as well. Lo lovely to be seen. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I've got one more question, um, and I'd like to answer the question, but I'd like you both to answer it. So perhaps Roland could a uh, answer that first. So if you were telling somebody who didn't know anything about Thanksgiving, what do you believe is the most important thing about Thanksgiving? What is the most important thing to Thanksgiving? Hmm. <laughs> Good question. I mean, I, 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 I love food a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I love good food. I love, I love this turkey because I don't eat, I don't eat turkey all the year, but just on Thanksgiving when I'm invited anyway. No, what is the most important thing? I guess it's to come together and uh, really to come together and to share and to communicate is the most important thing and to celebrate and and food and, uh, and then, <laughs> then enjoying this delicious food together. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's to come together. It's to come together. Okay. okay. And Dr. Jacqueline, what's your opinion? I think my opinion today is probably different than it would have been before, but I, I agree with Roland, but I think it's also the journey that people ventured out from their country to go in search of something else. And the journey that they took leaving England was a particularly treacherous one. And when they arrived in 
in America, they didn't actually land where it is they wanted to land. I think they were up near Cape Cod or something and they wanted to be a Plymouth. And many of them didn't leave the ship and they suffered with scurry and uh, starvation, all kinds of things. And yet uh, the ones who did leave were greeted, I believe by someone from uh, an Indian tribe who actually taught them how to grow crops and, and how to actually live and be a community. And I think that we forget about that today, that so long ago in the 1600s, people who are strangers from different countries actually worked together and came together. Whereas today in, in some parts of the world, we're not coming together. We're finding reasons to be at different points and to have different beliefs instead of actually hearing what each other thinks. So to me, I think that if we look back to what our ancestors did, and maybe we can try to incorporate some of that into our lives today so that we can be even more grateful. Well, we've got two wonderful answers. Um, and I'd like to um, weave those two wonderful answers into my thoughts on it. Um, and I would love it if everybody out there that's listening, please type in your comments. This show is about you, not about us. Um, so I think it, this symbol of Thanksgiving, actually, for me, the most important thing is about unity. And as Dr. Jacqueline says, when there is, you know, a division, you know, that's not going to come together well. Like, for example, in one house, if you have got the pumpkin pie, in another house, you've got the turkey, and another house, you've got the gravy, it's not going to be a good meal. So this unity is so special. But for me, I think what how I would like to think about Thanksgiving, and I've never celebrated Thanksgiving, but this year I'm going to do it, even though I'm not American, but I am English, so that would be fine. And my <laughs> life, it's cool. I can do it. So I'm going <laughs> to uh, celebrate Thanksgiving. But what I'm going to be celebrating is not so much the harvest, but actually about the seed. Because when you are having these wonderful conversations with your family and friends, it's the love you're putting into them. It's the ideas that you're exchanging and they're wonderful seeds to ignite new and beautiful things. And like, you know, with apples, they have seeds that grow more apple trees and so on and so on. And I also see if we 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 have so much to be grateful for, for all our English and American ancestors because of the seeds that they were sowing and how brave they were all. Because it's just like now, in one of those galleon ships, if somebody said, okay, you can go and see Dr. Jacqueline on a galleon, galleon ship, as much as I love her, <laughs> I would be thinking, oh my God, would I get there alive? <laughs> <laughs> and I might not. You know, so there's a lot uh, when you really, uh, Dr. Jack did say I was deep. Yes, I am. So I'm going deep now. However, but these wonderful traditions, they all can enrich our lives when we just remember and understand what they're about. So I'm handing it back over to you, Dr. Jacqueline. Well, really great point. Thank you. And thank you, Roland, also for sharing. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to watch a music video. I really love this because I think there's there's such meaning in this. The name of the track is Nothing Is Wrong With Me, and it's by the artist Sam Sarah, who is over in the UK. So we'll take a look at that and then we'll be right back with Holiday Traditions. You don't see me, yet I hear you every day. Everywhere I go, any time of day. I'm not tall enough, cat calls, but a wife and sister friends don't want you. Unless I give you what you want, I know what you're going to say. Nothing's wrong with me, I'm not here for you to do it as you please Nothing's wrong with me, I'm fine and I'm free There ain't nothing wrong with me I don't need to be fixed, it's not some bipolar thing And no, I'm not bleeding, love I don't need to be fixed, it's not some bipolar
back to USA Global TV, home of Talking Heads, and hello to our friends listening on Business Talk Radio. Our show is Holiday Traditions, and the topic today is Thanksgiving. Joining me in this discussion is my co-host, Daphne DeLucci, and our featured guest, Roland Friedel, who's also a co-host on the Mallorca Connection. So in our first segment, we were talking about our beliefs and understanding of Thanksgiving and also the history of Thanksgiving. One thing I don't think that we've actually touched on yet is the fact that Thanksgiving is a very big day for volunteering volunteering for food drives, uh, for making meals and inviting people, packaging meals and taking them to homeless shelters. What are your thoughts about this, Daphne? Well, I think this is a wonderful thing. Um, I do think that we need to have a system in place in the world so we don't need to do this just on holidays and a few days a year. But that's another topic. Um, but I do think I just want to celebrate all the people who actually do think of others in that way and a big thank you to them. And also what a difference that it makes. And all of us in life have high time, low time. And isn't it wonderful when somebody walks through the door with something in their arms just for you and they've thought about you? Not only do they think about you, but they took action and it's standing in front of you. So <laughs> for all those volunteers out there, it's wonderful. And all the people that receive, it's also wonderful to be able to receive because some people can't receive. 
some people find it very difficult so anybody that finds it difficult to receive stop it now because those wonderful volunteers have gone to a lot of trouble just to open their hearts so you know you open your arms and you say thank you and if that doesn't thank work you. yeah write to us and tell us why there we go <laughs> Thank you, Daphne and Roland. I want to acknowledge another one of our team members who is all about volunteering and Thanksgiving happens to be one of the days that she and her family give back and prepare meals and deliver them. And that would be Diane Floyd Bain. So Diane, if you're out there watching, we acknowledge you for all of your volunteerism. Roland, what are your thoughts about volunteering for Thanksgiving, other holidays and, and maybe every day of the year? I, it's so important for me, and, and, and I guess giving, giving back. And, and for me, Thanksgiving is one of, of, of many days and occasion, who, who, which is for me is a symbol of, of caring and sharing. And something triggered me when, when before the, the commercial break, when Daphne said, hey, I'm not American, but this year I start celebrating it. Uh, I mean, we don't have to be Americans to celebrate. We don't have to be Americans to care and share. And, and what triggered me is, hey, let's encourage the whole world to celebrate Thanksgiving. And, and, and really take care and share and celebrate together, but also to invite others who have less and maybe can be an, 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 an initiative that we not only take care of the holiday for our neighbors, just in our, it's just, if we don't talk about, you know, a third world or something like that, just in our neighborhood, there's there are most of the time plenty of people who don't have enough food or don't have enough of this or of that, that so are suffering and, and need help. Uh, for me, it's 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 it can be really a trigger initiative to to encourage people to celebrate and do and do invite those and support those who have less than we have because we we are very fortunate. So for me, it's 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 a symbol a symbol of caring and sharing absolutely. So let's encourage the whole world, not just the Americans, the whole world to celebrate Thanksgiving and to care and share about the neighborhood. Thank you so much, Roland. And I do want to acknowledge uh, one of our viewers today is the lovely Margie Cedrone, artist and jeweler. Margie is a friend of mine. She's made my jewelry for years. And so I'll put it in the chat how you can reach her. She's actually at 121 Haddon Avenue, Westmont, New Jersey. And as I mentioned, she's been one of our sponsors since the beginning. So hi, Margie. All right, so on to other topics. In my research, what I found was that back then when they were celebrating the first Thanksgiving, the second Thanksgiving, they didn't have access to sugar. And so there were no pies. So part of Thanksgiving is a lot of it is, you know, the desserts. Let's make the desserts because everybody wants to have the pumpkin pie, the apple pie. I don't even know what other pie, but they didn't have pie back then. Anybody, Daphne. Well, the thing is, what's really very interesting is actually you can cook sweetness quite easily. So they would have done that through the pumpkins and the apples, you know, um, because you can actually, you know, some especially in the autumn time when some of the apples are starting to ripen, like bananas and apples, you know, you can really taste their sweetness as they ripen. And... And in my, my many studies in life, <laughs> that I have studied dietary requirements from way back. And also, you know, um, our ancestors were really quite clever at storing food and knowing how to use food, whether they're putting it in jars, whether they're um, drying it between hay in a loft or, 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 or anything like that. So I think that they would have been very clever. So I think there would have been sweetness on the table. Um, but you know what? It's just like for, they were probably, perhaps they might have even been healthier than we are today because they didn't have those processed foods. Um, who knows? Wouldn't it be fun to go back in time? But I think for me, I my question would be for you, Dr. Jacqueline, what is on the table for a traditional Thanksgiving dinner? That is a great question. And, you know, I, I have prepared Thanksgiving for many, many years. And the interesting thing is that most of the things that I prepare, I do not eat. I don't eat turkey. So there's always a big turkey with a, a nice skin and uh, the turkey soup that you later can have. So I don't eat any turkey. So we've got a turkey. Inside the turkey, we've got stuffing. We've also got mashed potatoes. We've got green bean casserole. 
We have kugel. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but it's a combination of raisins and grapes and oranges and cottage cheese, I think, and noodles. And it's all baked together. <laughs> no reaction from either of you on that one. <laughs> I'm just thinking, wow, I've never had kugel. Yeah. It's, it sounds quite similar to the, what in the in, in London, UK, our traditional Christmas dinner that we have on the 25th of December. Yeah, it sounds similar to that, but obviously with that American twist. Also, food's so exciting and it's so wonderful to appreciate food as well and the food that we have um, in our environment. Um, I was, I was, I'm Cornish. I was brought up in the country, don't you know? Uh, so the thing is, so we used to be encouraged to eat what was grown and what was in season at that time. You know, we didn't go off and say, oh, I'm going to have this today. It'd be, you know, what can we, what can we take from the field? What, what is there? What is in season? Um, so I think with the Thanksgiving, I think that the people back then with their recipes must have been using what was, what was around them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, which actually I think is probably, um, I think to eat in season is also a clever thing. I think you'll be healthier for many reasons. Yeah. 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 What yeah. do you think, Roland? Yeah, in the beginning, there was no turkey. So um, the beginning, they just hunted or ate just what was there. Yeah, but they could easily shoot birds, different birds, or even that fish and stuff like that. Uh, but to come back to the, 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 the pumpkin pie, um, so and, and the sugar because when when the when the Mayflower this the ship arrived in in in, um, in the, the new world let's call it the new world um, as you said there was no there was no sugar they even had no oven so the, the indigenous helped them out with them and we know that uh, the Native Americans in the Northeast they already grew uh, pumpkin and squash and and they showed the settlers who came over how to use this how to cook it and and years later uh, the pumpkin by First, it, it uh, showed up in, in recent books in the, in the US and in Canada and, and later in the in the UK where it went a, a different way. But a pumpkin, by, I, I always also believe is good because, as you mentioned, there was no sugar and pumpkin has a little bit natural sweetness. Yeah, so it was just a good substitute uh, for 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 the sugar. Like here on the island in Mallorca, you know, the poor many years ago they had no no money for sugar and and and, and cacao so they found a, a different fruit here and the same was with pumpkin pumpkin was a nice and by the way a healthy and very nutritious substitute uh to, to the sugar yeah but it was it was originally by the by the by the natives mm -hmm. do you like pumpkin roland do you, is that something of part of your diet yes absolutely <laughs> uh, funnily uh uh, before my, my, my love uh, went to Vienna, we, we have been on, on, a, on a, a nice walk with our dogs and we found a huge, huge pumpkin. It was uh, 12 kilos, so I guess it's uh, 30, 30 pounds, so a really huge one. Uh, I said, what, what are we doing with this? So we cut it, uh, uh, we chopped it, so we froze it for pumpkin pie, we froze it for pumpkin soup and different, we love it. It's very nutritious, we love the taste and it's very helpful. I mean, I'm a meat eater, to be honest. I'm not a vegetarian, but I love pumpkin. It's very healthy and very nutritious and, and very tasty. Yeah, in different ways. But actually, right now, we have different kind of pumpkins. So I really like it. Thank you. Daphne, what about you? Are you a pumpkin fan? Um, well, being an artist, I'm more likely to take a pumpkin and create a work of art with it <laughs> than I would eat it. But that's because I'm sewing, and I'm not so English. I'm quite, I'm very international. However, I think I do like pumpkin, but in small doses. Um, like I wouldn't eat a huge thing of pumpkin pie just because of the the texture and the taste. But I do like a pumpkin soup mixed with other vegetables. It can be quite nice. Um, but it's not something that was introduced into my diet ever. So it's only through my American friends that. You know, I've tasted these delights. Um, but, you know, but then the pumpkin, then isn't it amazing how so many things have symbolic meanings because pumpkins and, you know, used for Halloween, you know, and mm. for candles and things like that. And then it shows up in um, Thanksgiving. So, you know, it's, it's wonderful to tap into all these things and, and then actually put them together. Yeah. But I'm wondering if there was... Um, do you think that Thanksgiving is going to last in the future? 
Do you think it's something that's go well, we want it to last it to go all over the world uh, but do you think that's a tradition that's easy for people to um, sustain and push forward perhaps even improve Dr Jacqueline? That's a great question I, I think and I hope that people start to look at the significance of it and the history of it as opposed to let's just sit down and eat a lot of food and then lie on the couch and watch football so, um, which, you know, obviously is important to, to do that and share that with other people as well. But I think this is a great opportunity as we are so much more global and have access to people all over the world like we haven't before, that we start sharing maybe new traditions, creating new traditions where we are thankful, not just this day, but every day and all over the world. So I do see it continuing. What about you, Roland? Well, same. I, I think so, and I hope so. And I guess families, you know, who, who, who really have family traditions and hold on that, hopefully, I guess they will continue. But I, I see, especially with younger people or the newer generation, that they're not so engaged in family tradition because nobody told them really the meaning. And I, I think when, when you educate people, especially the young generation, and just tell them it's not just seeing mom and dad and auntie and grandma you don't want to hear it anymore but there's a meaning so there's a purpose and I think young people are really looking for purpose in their life so when you get the purpose the meaning of it i think they will celebrate it too because it's a wonderful uh it's a wonderful celebration i, I think so it will be so then it's absolutely necessary in our society as i mentioned before because we are so business driven so fast values are going down so it's so so important to keep to keep this tradition i, I think so absolutely yeah, it will last. I strongly believe it will last. And I guess it's our job to, to really educate people and, and bring the message out of there. Why this wonderful celebration is, what's the meaning, what's the history, and why it's so, so, so important uh, to come together, not only to eat amazing food, but not only to help others, but also as a family, you know, that the core tribe to bring them together because the most important thing in life is family. It's all about family. Exactly. Well, I've just had a very entertaining thought because in my head, there's a lot of creativity and fun. And, you know, I have quite a lot to do with creating brands. So I just asked myself a really funny question. Daphne, if you're going to rebrand Thanksgiving, how would you do it? <laughs> so what I would do, I would say Thanksgiving and unity. Yeah. And I think we need the Thanksgiving and unity on it because it's about you know, pulling back our world together, pulling our relationships in together to, you know, nurture and nourish things instead of criticize and judge. And, you know, to look where the unions are, because we're a lot more alike than we're unlike as humans, wherever we are in the world. So I've just rebranded it. You heard it first, <laughs> Thanksgiving and unity. <laughs> I'm going to put that in the newsletter. <laughs> so attention that, world leaders, attention exactly, world leaders. Exactly. <laughs> it started here and it all started in it all, you know, Roland said he wants to kind of broadcast to the whole world Thanksgiving. I've just rebranded it. What bit are you going to do, Jacqueline? <laughs> I'm going to help you get the word out. <laughs> wow. Well, okay, there we go. A force of good. <laughs> It's very exciting. Well, I'm thankful for both of you, not just for being here today, but for your friendship, for your partnership, and for everything that you bring to this world and to this platform. Thank you both, Daphne and Roland. Thank you so much. And we wouldn't be here without the wonderful Dr. Jacqueline and all her vision and drive. And also, you know, for anybody out there that has just, you know, come across this content by accident, and who are these people? Um, I just would like you to keep finding Dr. Jacqueline wherever she um, appears, because she's one of the most tenacious, positive, loving people you will find on the planet. Um, so Aww. track that lady. Thank you, Daphne. That was so sweet. I also want to thank, thank you, Jacqueline, for all this energy and effort you put in to provide this amazing platform yeah, to spread positive. And I say positive because there's so much negative information in the market to spread positive information, sp positive wisdom and knowledge to the world. It's so important that the world needs positive and the world needs you. 
Oh, thank you. Wonderful. Also, I would like to uh, give a, a special thank you to Roland uh, because he's always a pleasure to work with. And, you know, when, when uh, we're working with Roland, there's harmony and unity. There's never this feeling, he's a man, I'm a woman, ooh, or any of this nonsense. And it's amazing what is actually in this gentleman's head. He's just like a, who needs Google? We'll just ask Roland. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fabulous to have you on our team, Roland. And as a good friend too. Thank you so much. I guess my, 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 my face turned a little bit red. <laughs> good. <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> One fact I wanted to share before we leave, which is something I didn't know, but apparently the president of the United States every year gives a, a pardon to two of the turkeys so that they can go into retirement and they are not able to be killed. So, And some of the governors around the, the country also do the same thing. So they actually get two turkeys and say, hey, guy, you're OK, you're, you're going to retire. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, it's 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 a nice case, but I would appreciate much more if the president, or the president or the governor, the official, would take care about how farmers grow and breed the turkey, so they have a good life and a good energy. Because you know, when when we eat, I'm a meat eater, as I said, yeah, and I only eat a special meat, so because I know I get the energy of this animal into my body so i'm taking really taking care about getting good meat good food like grass-fed beef and stuff like that no mass production i think it's much more important to take care about this than to rescue just one poor bird but it's a start <laughs> very good point roland daphne what would you like to add well i bless all the turkeys out there and i hope they're not in their little farmhouse shaking with fear as the day is coming um, and the thing is, is that I, I do agree with what Roland just said. It's about actually taking care of our animals um, and taking care of them in a way where nature intended. There is, there is a, a whole wonderful ecosystem that when it's left alone to work its magic, but we support it. I'm more on that side of the, the fence. Um, and if the president is listening, well done. I wonder how many turkeys you've saved, but you know, join us on USA Global TV to save the whole world. There and you go. <laughs> President Joe Biden, your invitation's been extended. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on a serious note, I, I go for a walk on a regular basis. And yesterday I went for a walk and where I am, there's a lot of water. There's bay on, on one side and there's the ocean on the other side. And I've noticed over all the years that the, the wetlands are getting, they're, instead of there being this much, now there's this much. And sometimes you don't see any of it and the, and the tide doesn't go down where you see the full amount of wetlands. And it's actually very frightening because we talk about birds and, and the creatures that live there and their homes are literally being eliminated by what we're doing on this planet, which of course is another show, it's not holiday traditions, but I just was thinking about all the wildlife out there and Roland, you're, you said about um, being a meat eater and having the meat raised, you know, the animals treated properly. And I just worry for nature and for the world that it's changing so much that uh, one day the, the ocean and the bay could just come together and everything could be gone. I'd like to make a comment on this. <clears throat> I just think that how I've rebranded Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving and unity actually could tie into this as well, because it's a unity of all life and all the things that happen on our planet. So the Thanksgiving traditions, anybody watching out there, what a fantastic time when you've got all the beautiful people around the table to actually give birth to all these ideas of how, what people can do to help what they can do because you know there's one little bit of goodness just in a kitchen in a town in a village in a friendship group that actually can change the world you know so i would encourage people to you know bring unity into the world and actually use thanksgiving this year to appreciate everything uh, but dare to dream and dare to push out forward all the wonderful ideas that they have in their heads 
because people are incredible, you know. So that's my take on it. That's lovely, Daphne. Thank you. Well, it's time to close out our show. And I have put all of your contact information in the comments on all the social media platforms so people can find you. But for people listening on Business Talk Radio who don't have access, Daphne, what's the best way to reach you? Um, well, there's only one Daphne Delucci in the whole world. So you can Google me, <laughs> Daphne. And Delucci is spelled D-I-L-U-C-E. And it's very easy. My email is Daphne at DaphneDelucci.com. Thank you, Daphne. And Roland, we also have your information in all the comments on the social media sites, but what's the best way for people to reach you and who would you like to contact you? Everybody, actually, everybody can contact me who needs, who, who needs a talk, who needs a listening ear and who needs support in this company or, or his own uh, personal development. And the best way is to go on the website, uh, www.sparkner-performance.com. I spell it, it's S-P-A-R-R-T-N-E-R minus P-E-R-F-O-R-M-A-N-C-E.com. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right, it's a pleasure having both of you here today. Look forward to seeing you again soon. And I'll just close out the show and see you backstage. Bye-bye and wishing everyone an amazing Thanksgiving. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate the comments and the, the fact that you're liking what we're doing. If you have a holiday that you would like us to do some research on, wherever you are in the world, you want people to know about it, just put it in the comments or you can email me, Jacqueline at drjacqueline.com. One thing I wanna close out with is that in terms of volunteering, this Saturday is a very exciting event for the Crohn's Colitis Foundation. I am a board member, I'm on the executive committee, I am a support group facilitator, I'm a fundraiser, I'm a volunteer, and I'm also a team captain of Dr. J's Colitis Crew. And the event is taking place in Philadelphia on Saturday, and we are so close to our goal, but yet we are so far. So I'm asking for your donations, whether it's a dollar, whatever it might be. Our goal is $15,000. And when I last checked, we were just under 12,000. So we've got the rest of the week to get that 3,000 and change. So if you would donate anything, I promise you, I will always remember. I remember everyone every year who donates and it means so much for us to help people. Every week, someone's reaching out to me from the support group perspective. Uh, last time it was 15 year old, I've had parents with seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds, nine year years old, their children have been diagnosed with ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. And at this moment, there is no cure, but we are looking and working together to find other options, other solutions, other remedies to help people. So if you would donate, you can go over to my Facebook page, which is Jacqueline Kerbeck, and you can just find Spin for Cures. The money goes directly to the foundation. Thank you again. I will leave you with our shows coming up. We have The Wise Ones, The Business Talk Show, and The Listening Mentor, three shows that are left, and you can find us right where you are watching now. Thanks again to Daphne. Thank you to Roland. It was a pleasure having you both here, and we look forward to seeing you again in about an hour. Bye.